safety-wise and manpower-wise. Uh, we're all driven by the same purpose of closing the plant down. Very proud, very proud. Uh, we're ready to travel. Pull this one off and we're going elsewhere. If it's got to be closed, I'm glad we're the people that are that are, uh, that are getting to do it. This building is 100% ready to come down. Let's tear down these walls. On May 21st, 1999, the Kaiser Hill team submitted to the Department of Energy a more than 20,000 page set of documents, painstakingly detailing the work to be done, a schedule for doing it, and the cost to achieve the closure of Rocky Flats by December 31st, 2006. This baseline plan will continue to be improved and modified as the project progresses. Most importantly, it included the strategy for how the site can get from here to there safely, with the utmost protection for the workers and the environment. Kaiser Hill has been conducting an ongoing planning effort since 1995. So this plan is really a refinement of the work scope, and it was a compression in the schedule from 2010 to 2006. No DOE project, environmental management closure project, has ever received this type of planning effort before. This is uh, b by far the most detailed uh, plan, cost-wise, schedule-wise, and work scope definition that's ever been put together in the DOE. Closure 2006. It has gone from a pipe dream to a goal, and now to a detailed plan for a history-making accelerated closure that each and every employee at Rocky Flats has a stake in. Well, this job can't be done without the contribution of the employees here. The employees are responsible for getting us here. There's very few people who could have looked back four years ago and imagined that today, Building 779 is being torn down. We've shipped all the pits off-site. The employees really own this project. The reality already being achieved by workers at Rocky Flats is exceeding the expectations of many. The Rocky Flats cleanup has gone from a 70-year, $37 billion endeavor to a closure complete by the end of 2006 for less than $7 billion. And between now and 2006, more nuclear cleanup work will be performed at Rocky Flats by Rocky Flats workers than anywhere else in the world. We will be doing more hands-on nuclear decommissioning here over the next seven years than will be done in the rest of the country combined. Site workers are making Colorado a safer place for themselves, for their families, and for the 2.5 million people of the Denver metropolitan area. We uh, like the fact and take a lot of pride in the fact that, that we're the, 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 the people that have been working on plant site for many, many years uh, get the opportunity to help decommission it and take it apart. A 2006 closure will mean that more than 6,000 acres of land can be turned over for primarily open space uses, providing a valuable resource for Rocky Flats families and the site's surrounding communities. The legacy is the legacy of a united effort Colorado is proud to play a role in, in terms of the Cold War, and that is ultimately a safer world. And I think that that's the legacy that we've seen come out of something that in many respects has for many years been misunderstood. And I want to thank the men and women of Rocky Flats who did so much, I believe, to make this world a safer place in which to, to live and raise a family. But how will the dreams of some be turned into the reality of many? How will Closure 2006 be achieved? The main thing is we work as a team and uh, everybody works together to make sure everyone else is safe. In building the 2006 baseline, two key principles were followed. Safely reducing urgent risks first and performing work in a sequence that reduces or eliminates operations, maintenance and security costs. The key closure strategy is a focus on the early closure of the site's secured area, known as the protected area. This is accomplished through the acceleration of residue processing and packaging, plutonium metals and oxide stabilization, packaging and off-site shipment, and the removal of plutonium held up in piping, ducts, and equipment. Completing these activities early allows for security requirements to be reduced, which saves money that can be applied to additional closure work and doing so eases access requirements, thus making it easier for D&D work to be performed. 
Other key 2006 strategies include an early focus on the deactivation and decommissioning D &D, of the plutonium facilities, the deferral of buildings with little or no contamination to later in the project, performing plutonium building D&D and special nuclear material stabilization and risk reduction activities in parallel, accelerating plutonium holdup removal, expanding the waste shipping capacities and infrastructure to meet shipping demands, and the deferral of some of the outdoor remediation projects to allow resources to focus on the greatest reduction in risks and operating costs. With the strategies laid out, let's now look at the actual work elements and what they entail. Special Nuclear Material Stabilization and Packaging Rocky Flats has many tons of radioactive plutonium and uranium, the legacy of past weapons production activities. All of these wastes and materials must be placed in a stable form and packaged for long-term storage or disposal. I'm very proud of this machine. It's going to help us get the plutonium off this plant site. This includes the packaging of more than 2,000 containers of plutonium metals and oxides, the processing and or packaging of more than 100 tons of plutonium contaminated production byproducts called residues, and the draining of radioactive liquids from process piping areas and systems in buildings 371 and 771. Building D&D. &D. More than 700 structures comprising some 3.5 million square feet of building space must be stripped out, decontaminated, and demolished, and the underlying soil remediated. Structures range from uncontaminated office trailers to full-blown plutonium production facilities. The bulk of the effort will lie in the cleanup and removal of the site's five major plutonium buildings. Soil and Water Remediation Radioactive and chemical contamination exist in soil and small areas of groundwater at the site. In all, 130 areas of suspected contamination must be addressed prior to site closure. Seven of the top 10 risk sites and many others have already been cleaned up. Off-site shipment. Rocky Flats must ship all of its nuclear material and waste off-site. This includes the shipment of plutonium metals and oxides to the Savannah River site, transuranic waste to the Waste Isolation Pilot Plant, low-level and low-level mixed waste to the Nevada test site and other permitted facilities, and the off-site disposal of hazardous and sanitary wastes. In addition, the site must disposition more than 3 million classified documents and 600,000 items of property. Site support. Because of the complex nature of the work performed at Rocky Flats, no work activity can be performed by one organization or group alone. Therefore, site support operations include a multitude of highly important activities that are key to the closure of Rocky Flats. Such activities range from safety and security to laundry operations, procurement, and human resource functions. All of these support functions provide an important and crucial role in site closure. By far the biggest strategy for accelerating the closure of Rocky Flats is building on the history of workforce innovation. Workers at Building 779 who dealt with unknowns to forge new paths for future nuclear D&D efforts. This is the first ever demolition of a plutonium manufacturing facility the Department of Energy complex. This cleanup of Rocky Flats has come a long way in a short time. Workers at Trench One who successfully used integrated safety management systems to remove more than 30 tons of pyrophoric depleted uranium without a single injury or environmental concern. Workers who pioneered the pipe component bringing forth a new shipment solution for Rocky Flats waste. Workers who turned the residue program around to get residue processing and packaging on track for accelerated closure. Workers who sought out unique technology solutions to decontaminate highly contaminated rooms with sugar. 
D&D workers who continue to come up with safer and more productive ways to cut up and remove contaminated equipment. The successful acceleration of site closure hinges on the ability of Rocky Flats workers to continue to identify and pursue innovation in every activity at this site. And while the employees of Rocky Flats take the site down the road to closure, a key concern is the road to each employee's own individual future. One goal of the Rocky Flats Closure Project is that the employees of this site leave Rocky Flats with enhanced skills, opportunities, and options for their future, whether it be in jobs at parent companies, other DOE sites, through small business, or retirement. Whatever road that is chosen, resources are being made available to help make it a smooth one. Ideas are being developed to broaden and expand existing educational benefits to provide employees training for their future. The Career Transition Center at Rocky Flats is there to help employees create their own personal closure plans and provide a myriad of services from resume writing to financial planning seminars. The progress being achieved at Rocky Flats is setting standards for nuclear deactivation and decommissioning work around the DOE complex and around the world. In doing this important work, the employees at Rocky Flats are turning yet another page in history and safely turning Rocky Flats into Colorado's own field of dreams as early as 2006. I don't know whether we'll meet that goal or not, but it, it won't be because uh, the people on this plant site didn't put forth the effort.